Hello, welcome back if you're joining me again. Hello for the first time if you're not joining me again. Um, so we are here to make a headscarf and I have got one that's actually not handmade on today but I've got more my handmade ones here to talk you through. Um, so I, in, if you are joining us for the first time today, just a little heads up, I'm back here in London in my new house which is very exciting. And I'm also back with Jazzy and she's not napping. So I have um, done a little bit of bribing with raisins and some of her favourite TV programmes. How long that will last, who knows? So let's get started. Um, all the details to all of our live sew alongs um, are on our website, but you can also see what the schedule is down in the description box below, um, um, along with any pattern links if that's relevant for the sew along that we're doing. Obviously, there's no pattern links particularly for this because I'm just going to show you how I made it up as I found, I found one and I copied that. Um, as always, all of our sew alongs are uh, free, but if you're in a position to donate something and buy us a coffee as a thank you at the end of this, there's a link to our coffee page um, in the description box below. So we are making chiffon headscarves. That's what I recommend. But if you don't have chiffon, then um, you could use rayon or something else lightweight. I should also say, by the way, guys, that because it's a bank holiday, I didn't want any of the Soviet team to have to work today. So it's just me flying solo. So if there are some unfortunate comments or trolls um, who appear, just ignore them. We'll pretend that they're not there. That's the best thing we can do anyway. So this is the headscarf that we're gonna make. It is got an elasticated tube, so basically a piece of elasticated inner tube at the back, and then it's got the chiffon or georgette section here. So this is one that I actually bought, but this is the one that I made and I copied from it. So I've used slightly lighter weight chiffon um, there, but um, it's essentially the same concept. It's got a elasticated tube or rather tube, elastic inner tube. And then it's got this piece here that you basically pleat into the elastic and that creates a kind of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It pleats in narrow and gets wider here. So what you'll need to do this, um, I've got the measurements, I've got, you need an inch wide piece of elastic that's 18 centimeters um, long. If you have a particularly big head or a particularly small head, you might want to adjust that. Um, but that's pretty standard, I'm sure. Then I have got a piece of Georgette that is uh, 40 centimetres by 25 centimetres. And I've got another piece that is 30 centimetres by 12 centimetres. Okay, so that was 40 centimetres by 25 and 40 centimetres by 12. Um, and then the elastic is 18 centimetres. I'm sorry, I haven't had a chance to um, convert those into um, uh, American inches, but um, hopefully you get the gist. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take our big piece of chiffon and we're gonna finish the edges of that. So the uh, piece that I did this one with a rolled edge hem foot, which if I show you up close, it looks like that. If you've got an overlocker, by all means, go onto that setting and do that. But I don't want to do that if because a lot of people, <laughs> oh Sarah, you have a big head. <laughs> Make it a little bit longer then. <laughs> um, I don't want to do that because um, I know not everybody has them. So I'm going to do a very narrow hem, which is actually what they have done here on this one. So, if we're doing an arrow, we've basically got to finish the two long edges like that. So I'm going to bring my ironing board towards me. Um, so what I'm going to do is fold over the narrowest amount that I can without burning my fingers. So ideally about five mils. Come on, little one. It's going over. Now, if you're using a polyester georgette like I am, you'll probably find that it doesn't like being ironed. But, um, just do the best that you can do, okay? Like that. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Oops. 
So we're folding this to the wrong side. I don't know if there is actually a, not a obvious wrong side and right side to mine. Not really, no. But if there is, you're folding this over to the wrong side. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we are going to stitch this down. Okay. So we're going to stitch it down. I'm going to put it on stitch length uh, three because I just think that'd be better. And we're going to stitch this one layer down. And now this isn't finished. This is just the first stage of a narrow hem and it helps us get a much crisper double hem. So whizzy downy. Now it doesn't really matter that if you're not right on the edge of this. Just find a point um, that is going to allow you to keep your stitching straight. And I'm just slightly stretching this so that um, it helps me keep it taut. I'm sorry you can't see. I'm going to have to get sort out some better angles and stuff, guys. But I literally set this up just before I started. So I'm a little bit, um, yeah, just finding my feet, of course, because I've just moved house. Okay, that's one side done. Let's do the other side. Now, this is such a good project, guys, for leftover chiffon. So, say you're making the pussy bow blouse or um, the most recent Freya blouse. It's great for that. You can just use some leftover fabric. It doesn't take much. Okay. Let's show you that. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim away as best I can that excess. So if I can, it's going to, it's quite fiddly, but you want to try and trim away. So you just leave about two millimeters next to the stitching. I'm finding that in some places it's actually fine, other places it does need a bit more trimming. Talk amongst yourselves, guys. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves as I do this. I shall tell you about the move. It went well. Um, so I arrived here, so I drove down on Thursday afternoon when Jasmine was ready for her nap. It took about four hours. And then I, with the cat and the dog in front, everyone was very good. It was a warm day. So actually everyone just slept, which was very good. And then I, um, sorry, Jazzy's properly reading a story to some, to Poppy at the moment. Um, and uh, I took Jazzy straight to Matt's because he was going to look after her for the weekend so I could move in. And then I came to the house at about half five. So quite late in the day. Um, and the builders were here until about eight that night. Bless them, finishing bits and bobs off, although they didn't finish everything off. Um, so the first night, really all I did was sort of clean the bathroom and then uh, clean my bedroom and make up my bed. And I thought, well, the rest can just, you know, be, I can just cope with that in the, you know, in the morning I can do it. Anyway, then I woke up at five the following morning, had the animals with me all night, although I'm now starting a new thing where they're not sleeping on the bed here. But that first night I was like, for all of us, it's better. Woke up at five and was gasping for a cup of tea. What a surprise. <laughs> I hadn't unpacked anything and I certainly hadn't unpacked my kettle. So I started unpacking boxes labelled kitchen, couldn't find it. So I was like, well, that's all right. I'll just get a pan and I will uh, boil water. However, I have the, this new yeah. snazzy induction hob and I could not for the life of me work out how to turn the darn thing on. <laughs> so I was grumpily, frustrated and defeated, went back to bed without a cup of tea. I've now worked out how to use it and as I was saying earlier, I got very frustrated because I've bought the wrong pans. 
apparently, even though it said they were induction friendly. Yes, Jasmine. We're getting there on this one. I'm just going to keep trimming a little bit more. But yeah, and then Molly came over and she basically helped me unpack and break the back of it all. Um, and then we, uh, and then after that, I uh, just kind of managed to do most of it by myself over the weekend and get it all done. Um, I guess because I thought about quite a lot of it before that wasn't too bad to unpack because I'd already gotten rid of quite a lot of stuff and massively sorted through things. So, um, this, granted, there's still mess everywhere and the builders have to come back and do two more days work, but it's definitely feeling like a home. Okay, so that is now trimmed down on both sides. So now we're gonna turn it into a double hem by turning it again. And you'll probably find that when you turn it this second time, because of the stitching um, and because you've already got one side folded over, you'll be able to fold it over really nice four or five millimeter. So really quite narrow. And it should, ouch, hold in place a little bit better. Ideally. Okay, so that's that one. And then the other one. So this is essentially, I mean, I wouldn't call this a pin hem because it's not quite as narrow, but this is how you would make a pin hem. Okay. So now I'm just going to stitch that down. Um, and I'm, I'm going to stitch it down from the right side just because I like to see where I'm going and not get confused with the other stitch line that we've just created. But again, main thing, ideally you want to be closer to the folded edge on the inside. But when a hem is this narrow, as long as you're at least in the middle, then that will be fine. I'd certainly reckon this is quite a good little project as well. If you're doing a pin hem in something else more serious, this is a good way to practice it because it's not going to be that visible if it's not that perfect. Mm, can't push this back. This new oak table is very heavy. I just realised you are seeing me so closely. Oh, that picture, thank you. Yeah, it was from Sri Lanka. Ooh. Tea picking. <laughs> Tea picking. Okay, excuse the faces, guys. It's just not feeling through, but now it is. Putting what, darling, on? I'm putting makeup on? Okay, you're putting makeup on. Imaginary pretend makeup. Yeah, lovely. Oh, nice. Looking gorgeous, Jasmine. Okay, that is now done. So we're going to put this little one to one side. That's my little narrow hem there on both sides. Put that to one side and let's sort out this. So this is going to be the tubing for the elastic. So I'm just going to place that right sides together. Um, again, there's no right side or wrong side with my fabric, but if there was, it needed to be right. It needs to be right sides together. Oh, and then. I'm going to stitch that with a centimetre and a half seam allowance, five eighths of an inch. The reason why I've decided to do that is we need to trim the seam allowance down and it's so much easier to trim seam allowance down if you're in chiffon or georgette if you've got a good chunky seam allowance. Trim that down. Okay. 
and trim those things off. Now we're trimming down. I'm just going to first just quickly set it, press it flat on the um, ironing board. And now I'm going to trim that down to five mils. And I'm going to turn him through. And you should be all, all right to do this with your fingers because it's not too narrow. Okay. And now, keeping that seam like that, I'm going to press it flat. So the seam, I want it to be the, in the middle. So I'm going to press this flat, but with the seam in the middle here on the top. wobbly I don't know what's happened there I think it's sort of distorted but anyway it will be fine so then take the elastic pop a safety pin in thanks Kim and we're going to thread that into the tube Mommy, Mommy, have have, oh you look lovely Jasmine have you finished all of your makeup yeah. very nice what's happening in Ben and Holly Um, so we're going to pull that through. Now when you get to the point like there, where the elastic comes to the end, just put a pin in so it's, it's level there. Because what we need to do is that we need to bunch this up along here. Okay, and then we need to do the same here. Put a pin in, take that needle and um, safety pin out and put a pin in here. Okay, so it's like that. So we can now anchor the tube to the elastic just with a little straight stitch at about five mils, less or less than five mils from the edge. So I'm going through, closing the end of the tube and sandwiching the end of the elastic as I do it. Okay, and then the next one is the same. Yes, Jazzy? Oh, okay, just one second. Don't pull those off, darling, because they're glass. What do you want to do? Okay, so now we just trim those threads off. I'm trimming these ones off. Okay, so that we put to one side. Mummy. Yes, darling. Poppy doesn't need anything, darling. She's sleeping. That's all right. Leave it. She's fine, darling. Just leave it there. She's having a nice sleep. So now what we're going to do is we are going to put some pleats into this. So if I show you, you can see here, there's pleats. Now I didn't do these in a kind of measured -y way, just kind of pleated mine so that it, it became narrower. So a measured -y, that's that is a good English term, isn't it? So I am pleating it here. Let's see if I can put this down. Ah! Oops. Now we're wonky. So you can see. So I'm pleating this here, like that, and like that. I might make that next one a bit but more. I might do a little one there as well. Because basically, we're going to stitch this over, like we're going to kind of wrap this with this so it's ideal it's better if they're sort of 
if you pleat it like that and this bit is a bit longer without pleats because that can be the piece that mainly wraps over and so you've not got too much bulk on both sides. So then just roughly, I mean, you can see this is really rough, guys. It doesn't need to be perfect. Look, do it by eye, roughly pleating it the same distance on the other side. Mommy. Yeah? Poppy's got a lovely different colour. I know, Poppy tried, Poppy ate Mummy's lipstick, didn't she? Poppy ate Mummy's lipstick that stays on forever. And now Poppy's nose is red. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to make that second pleat a little bit bigger there. And then again there. And then another bit there, haven't we? Let's just do that one a little bit more. That last one I did a bit is narrower. Okay, so I'm now going to stitch these in with a machine tack. Or you can do a regular stitch, but I, a machine tack, it will feed through better. Um, and you need to make sure that that is at five mils. So just stitching the pleats into place across the end. That's a better angle now. I think you can see what I'm doing. And then we can take all those out and the pleats are in. So we just do that on that side. Always helps when you're sewing pleats like this, if you can, to sew down over the pleats. Fabric best for the Lizzie skirt is uh, cotton, cotton lawn or cotton poplin. Is that what we're doing next week, isn't it? This week we're doing our new Giselle. Now, I do not have fabric for that, annoyingly. I don't know where I've put my fabric. I was hoping for it, but anyway. Um, yeah, nice new pattern to be doing. I'll be doing that tomorrow, and hopefully I will have some childcare. Um, the new childminder is starting this afternoon. She's going to come and hang out with us, and will um, be coming back tomorrow whilst we're doing my sew along and taking Jazzy off for a picnic. So... I feel like I can do this with her around for an easy project, but not for a hard one. Sorry, I just noticed that has not caught properly, so I'm just going to do that a little bit again. Okay, so now, so if that would be the back where that seam is, and that would be the front, so that, that would be like that on the outside. Whoops. So... Bearing that in mind, we need to sandwich this now. This is where you're going to have to just bear with me, because, <laughs> as you know, I get confused. Um, okay. I was thinking if that's there, yeah. So where we concentrated the pleats in one end, that's the end that we need to have the, the right side, the outside side of the elastic facing down onto. So I'm just going to do that and then like that, yeah? So the seam should be show, showing to you and the, and the side without a seam not. And then I'm going to wrap, fold that over and sandwich that elastic in and then pin everything. So we're pinning through all the layers, through the elastic. I'm just get rid of these threads. Um, these two edges here need to align. Sorry, guys, my nails. Shows that I moved in, doesn't it? Moved house. Hoping tonight I might be able to have a little bath and a, a nail time. Get my shellac out. Okay. So that's one end. Let's do the other end. Actually, no, let's stitch that in because it's, we're gonna have to pull the elastic. So let's stitch that in. So make sure you go back onto a regular stitch length. I'm going to use seam allowance a centimetre or three eighths of an inch, whichever is easier for you to follow. I'm just going to make sure that's really tucked in there. Make sure you do a really good reverse at the start and at the end because there is going to be quite a bit of strain on this seam. 
okay? And then when it's like that, just trim it. Now this hadn't, the one that I bought hadn't been finished, but I think it's important that we finish that seam allowance. So I'm now gonna pop it onto a um, zigzag and I'm just gonna zigzag stitch along that edge, finishing the edges so they're all encased. And I'm actually just gonna go all the way back up with my reverse. So I've sort of done that twice. If that... So I went all the way down and then held the reverse and went all the way back up. And I know zigzagging doesn't look super neat, but this is going to be covered because then that comes in like that. So it completely, you see it from the back there, it completely encases it and it looks lovely and neat like that. Okay. So now we need to do the same on the other side. So again, I just need to, I'm gonna put it back inside out. So that will make sure I don't end up twisting anything. And then I'm gonna pull that over to here. And I'm gonna make sure that again, that the pleats are, at, um, I'm focusing, placing it right sides down to the pleaty end pleaty side and then this actually helps if you put a pin in there just to hold it in place and then fold that over and then when you fold it over again make sure that your two hemmed edges there meet and now I'm just going to take those pins out from inside and pull, put them back in on this side so that I can take the pins out easily when I'm sewing back on to straight stitch and then exactly the same. So we're sewing it with a centimetre seam allowance or three eighths of an inch. Take those pins out. Sorry, I sewed over them. Now, I trimmed that down and we're gonna zigzag. Sorry guys, I'm not seeing any comments. I think I just saw something about my top. Um, so this is the ultimate shift dress top and I made this about a year after I opened the business. This is about seven years old, but this fabric is amazing, isn't it? Oh, capes. Although hilariously, Jasmine was like, mummy, what's, um, what's on your top? And I said, oh, it's uh, cakes. She's like, can I have a cake? Mental note, don't wear this if I'm trying to not let her have cakes. I'm going all the way back. So now that's finished. And again, like I said, it doesn't look super neat on there, but you won't see it because it all comes out like that. Let's just trim that off. There we go. Oh no, we've got some rogue threads here. Let's just get rid of those. Yeah, there we go. There we have our head scarves, guys. Right, let's see if I can put it on my, with you. My, my lipstick came off. Oh, your lipstick came off. Oh, dear, Jazzy. So, you're seeing my tail. Oh, no. My bad, bad haircut, guys. Oh, so basically, yesterday, I really wanted to... Um, really wanted to have... Um, my haircut, so I've basically started. Mummy, I need some lipstick with this. Okay, darling, let me, mummy, just put this on first, yeah? Oh, no, 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 don't use that, that's a pen. Come here and I'll, I'll help you do it afterwards. Go look in the mirror. Look, can you see? Jasmine's trying to put lipstick on with a felt tip, guys. Let's quickly put it on and have a look. So yeah, I self-cut my hair, self-cut, I cut my hair myself. And basically, I kept trying to straighten it off and it was just getting shorter and shorter. <laughs> That's why I have a very short bob now. <laughs> and I've kind of cut, got it wavy so that you can't... Mummy! Yeah? How about the picture? I need some lipstick. Okay, come show everyone your lipstick. No, Mummy, I've not got any more on today. 
Yeah, you've got quite a lot of lipstick on, but it looks lovely, Jasmine. It's not. Okay, off you go. Poppy, stop Poppy from eating those biscuits. I don't think there's anything left in there. I'm going to have to go, guys. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. Really easy to make a headscarf. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock when there'll be somebody here on the Soverit team joining us. And hopefully I'll have childcare to make this whole thing easier. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Bye,